गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन अप टिल नाउ वी हैव स्टार्टेड विद आवर सेकंड यूनिट दैट वी आर इनटू द फर्स्ट सेक्शन दैट इज द सीक्वेंसिंग वी हैव सीन सीक्वेंसिंग ऑफ एन जॉब्स टू मशीन्स प्रॉब्लम वी हैव सीन द सीक्वेंसिंग ऑफ एन जॉब्स थ्री मशीन प्रॉब्लम एंड इन टुडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू सी द सीक्वेंसिंग ऑफ एन जॉब्स एम मशीन प्रॉब्लम right so here the number of jobs that we have is represented by the letter n the number of machines that we have is represented by machine m right so there is no restriction on the number of jobs and the number of machines right so previously when we see uh, when we have seen the problem of n jobs uh, two machine problem so the restriction was there should be only two machines right then we have seen sequence in problem of n jobs three machines So the uh, there was the restriction was that there should be only three machines. But now here we have m machines. That means that there is no restriction on machines that we have. And this problem is the point. It has it has the same philosophy that we uh, that we have seen in for for the last two uh, methods. Now let's understand how we are going to uh, start with this n job m machine problem. Right. So uh, here also you have n jobs, you have m machines. No, uh, no. There is no urgency of uh, any job. There is no, there is no passing rule that has been applied here. And the order of the jobs, sorry, the order of the machines which are to be followed for the processing of the jobs is what here. For this particular uh, problem, we are we are we are going to consider that the sequence of the machines. Is A B C D and the last question that we have is denoted with the uh, the, uh, the letter K. Now here also we we'll have to understand. Uh, here also uh, make it a point that unless and until the conditions are getting satisfied, we are not going to. We are not. Uh, we, we won't be able to solve uh, this uh, problem. Right. So what are the conditions here? There are two conditions, and either of the two conditions should get satisfied. So if one of the condition gets satisfied here, we are able to solve this problem with the and uh, we are with the sequencing order, right? So what is the first condition that uh, and here is we have uh, here the minimum processing time on A, right? So for machine A, the minimum processing Time should be greater than or equal to the max processing time on the machines B, C, D till A minus one. Till the second class machine, till A minus one, suggests that it is the second class machine. Again, I am repeating the statement: if the minimum processing time on A is greater than or equal to the maximum processing time on machines B, C, and D till your second class machine, that is another term. Right. The second condition is minimum processing time on K. Now, what is the K? K is the last machine, right? So, minimum processing time on your K should be greater than or equal to the maximum processing time on machines B, C, D till K minus one. Right. So, if you want, so both of the conditions should be fit. The RHS term is remaining constant, right? So. The RHS term is maximum time of the maximum processing time of machines B, C, D till your second last machine, right? So RHS remains constant. Only the LHS is changing. The LHS for your first condition is minimum processing time of A should be greater than or equal to, and uh, the minimum processing time for the second condition is minimum processing time on machine K should be greater than or equal to. Now either of these two conditions must be satisfied. Conditions are satisfied. We are going to solve. No? We will be able to solve this problem with the help of the sequencing model. Else, what is the? No? Else, what will have to do? We will have to take every possible sequence, and then we will have to find out what are the elapsed time and the idle uh, time and the minimum elapsed time. So that is going to give us the uh, minimum elapsed time, total elapsed time that will be considered. So we are not going to with the help of the sequencing model. We are not there is no need of uh, thinking of all the possible things, but now that is for what we can do. The, the sequencing model only if either of these two conditions are getting satisfied. 
If either of these two conditions are getting satisfied, we are going to convert the sequencing of n job that question problem into the problem of n job two machines problem, right? So n job n machine problem will be getting converted into n job two machine problem. How come? So here what we are going to do is here we are going to consider the two fictitious machines and we are going to name these fictitious machines as A and B. Right? Now we will have to find out what is the processing time of each job for this fictitious machines. Right? So the processing time for fictitious machine A, right? So here it is represented by A I. That value is nothing but the addition of the processing time of A, you know, for machine A, B, C, B, till your second last machine for that respective job. So it will be represented by A R as equal to capital A R plus B R plus B R plus B R till your second last machine. Lastly, the processing time for your second machine, second picture machine, because B. Can be found out by addition of bi plus ci plus bi plus till your last machine. So addition of the processing time in both of these cases is important. But which machines are to be considered? That is very very important. In your first case, for your first fixtures machine, we are going to start with first real machine till second last real machine. And in your second fixtures machine. We are going to start with the second real machine till the last real machine. In both of the cases, the number, no, the number of the, uh, uh, the value for which we are going to do the addition remains the same. But here the processing times are you know, machines to be considered are different, and that should be uh, that should be clearly understood. Otherwise, there is a chance of making error, and lastly, you will be getting a uh, faulty optimal sequence, and again. A faulty uh, elapsed time and ideal machine or uh, uh, ideal time for the machine system consideration, right? So, with this particular background, we'll be understanding how to start with solving the actual problem, right? So, this is the problem that we have. There are four jobs that are given to us jobs are one, two, three, and four, and we have five number of machines. The machines are named as a, B, C, D, and E. Right? So, four jobs and five machines. Right? What we have is we have the processing time of each job on each machine. For example, job number two has the processing time of six on A, six on B, four on C, five on B, and ten on E. And likewise. So, what we have to do is here the problem is to now here they are uh, here they have told us find out uh, here they have asked us to find out the optimal sequence of the jobs such that the total elapsed time will be minimum. And again, they have also asked us to find out the idle time from each machine. Each machine we have to find out the idle time of machine A, B, C, and E. Right? So we are going to start with our first step. What is the first step here? We are going to check whether this particular material can be solved by using the sequencing model. So, what should be the first step? Right? The first step we have the minimum processing time of A has to be found out. So, what is the minimum processing time of A? Here we have A minimum is equal to 5. Right? Also, we have to find out the minimum processing time. The last machine, right? So minimum processing time of the last machine is fixed on the last machine is six. So I'm also going to write the minimum as six. For all the other machines, we have to find we have to take into consideration the maximum time. So we have B max to be found out, we have C max to be found out, and we have D max value to be found out. Right? So here the B max value comes out to be this, which is coming out to be 6. Here for C max, the maximum value comes out to be 5. And for B, the maximum value comes out to be 6. Right? Let's check it, uh, check it with our first condition that is A minimum. 
A minimum to be greater than the non conformity B nine C nine and B nine, right? So K minus one year is which C second last question. Which is the second last question? This B nine. So C criteria getting followed. I got in this condition if it is five, if it is greater than or equal to six, comma five comma six. So no, this condition is not getting satisfied. Let's move with our second condition. What is our second condition? We have the condition A minimum should be greater than or equal to B max, C max, B max. Right? So here the K max value is A minimum value is 6, which is greater than or equal to 6, 5, and 6. So here the condition. This particular condition is getting satisfied, and we can solve this entire numerical with the help of the sequencing model. Right? So now let's move ahead and follow the next step. Now, what is the next step? We will have to consider two fixtures machines, A and B, and the processing time of these two fixtures machines will be found out by this method. So let's Apply this second step now. Yeah, so consider two fixtures machines A and B. So I have jobs here. So we have two machines to consider. Very first machine is our AI machine, in which which are the machines that will be considering in the R plus B I plus C I plus. We are going to move only to our second last machine. For our next fixtures machine, we will be starting with B I plus C I plus B I plus C I. So the number of machines will be remaining same, but which machine is to be considered is now the that needs to be understood. That would be that your understood this. Now let's write our job here. Job number one. Is two, it is three, and it is four. So, firstly, for our first fixture machine, the value will be one and one, it will be seven plus five, that is twelve, twelve plus two is fourteen, fourteen plus three is seventeen. Next, for our so same job, but for our second fixture machine, we will be considering. 7 right so the addition of 5 plus 2 is 7 7 plus 3 is uh, 10 10 plus 9 is 19. let's move with our second job it is 6 plus 6 is 12 12 plus 4 is 16 16 plus 5 is 21 next thing 6 plus 4 is 10 10 plus 5 is 15 15 plus 10 is 20 for our third job, it is 5 plus 4 to 9, 9 plus 5 is 14, 14 plus 6 is 20. And we have next one is 4 plus 5 is 9, 9 plus 6 is 15, 15 plus 8 is 20. Next thing we have 8 plus 2 is 11, 11 plus 3 is 14, 14 plus 2 is 16. And we have 3 plus 2 is 6 plus 2 is 8, 8 plus 6 is 14. So we have these values of the processing time for our fixtures jobs, uh, sorry, for fixtures machines A and B. Now, what is the next step that we are going to do? Is next step that we are going to do is the Sequencing of the jobs. 
right so the next step will be sequencing of the drop and the steps are very 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 simple right so considering the above data let's start right so the minimum value that we have here is 40 and 40 is coming out for your fourth number of job and it is for this machine so it is to be placed last on machine a so your value will be right for again we are going to strike that off we are not going to continue this so after that the least value we have is of 17 and 17 comes for your job number one for machine A. So hence it is to be placed first on the job uh, sorry first on machine A and it will be five off. The next minimum value that we have is Amongst us, it is 20 and 20 comes out for 20 comes for job number 3 on machine A. When we place first on job A, and hence we are going to place T here, right? And we are going to type it up. The last job that is pending is 2, and we have got our optimal sequence as 1, job number 1, then job number 3, then job number 2, and then job number 4. So this is the optimal sequence that we have got. I am hoping that you have understood up to this particular step. Now so let's proceed ahead. We have got the optimal sequence here and the next step is now what? The next step is to find out what is the total elapsed time for this optimal sequence and obviously it will be the minimum total elapsed time. We are also going to find out what is the idle time for machine a, B, C, D, and E. So let's start with the table. Okay, so this is the table that we will be requiring to draw. Right? Let's fill up with the processing time first. Right? Okay. These are the processing times that we have given in the starting the problem statement itself. Now, with the help of this, we are going to move ahead. So, I want your attention here. We are going to start putting this table and uh, let's see how we can do it. So, the processing of job number one will start at A is equal to 0, 7 plus 0 plus 7. Right. So here we have 7 plus 5 is equal to 12. So here the idle time will be 7. Right. So here 1 plus 2 is 14. Idle time here will be 14 plus 3 is 17. And here the idle time will be 14. Right. Nextly it is 70 plus 9 comes out to be 76. The idle time comes out to be 70. I think there shouldn't be any doubt in our first step. So here it will be 7. 7 plus 5 plus 12. 12 and 12. There will be no idle time for your machine P. So 12 plus 4 is 16. Here the job is finishing at 16, but the machine was available at 14. So there will be the machine will have to wait, will be taking 16 plus 5 over 21. The machine will wait for 16 minus 14. So that is for two units. So next day we have 21 and 17. Again, the machine will have to wait 
so machine will be waiting till 25 minus 25 minus 70 that is nothing but 40 right next week we have 27 26 the machine again will have to wait for one unit here so 27 plus 8 comes out to be 23 so this will be your second step here RP did mistake here success 27 and 27 plus 8 is how much plus 34 we will have to take care of the small small calculation if you are not want to use the calculator no problem right let's move ahead 1 plus 6 is 18 18 and 16 so again the machine is waiting 18 plus 6 is 24 the machine is waiting for right so 24 and 21 again the machine will have to wait the machine will have to wait for how many the 28 and 27 again the machine will have to wait and it will be waiting for next week 33 and 33 and 25 the machine will not be wait here 35 plus 10 plus 40 so this will be your fourth step that we got Right, let's move ahead. The last 18 plus 8 is 26, 26 and 24. Again, the machine will have to wait, it is going to wait for right. So now 29 and 28, again, the machine will be waiting. The machine will have to wait for 32 and 23. Machine is not waiting here. Here, it will be 20. Right. And 35 and 45 again, machine do not fit to the here. It comes out to be 51. Right. So let's write the idle sign here as well. So for your first machine, that is A machine. The process completed at 26, but it is now we will have to wait till 51 minutes. And 51 minus 26 will come up to be 25. Next, for your machine B, so it is 51 minus 29. 51 minus 29 comes up to be 20. Next week for your machine C, 51 minus 32, 51 minus 32 comes out to be 90. And for your machine T, it is 51 minus 35, 51 minus 35 comes out to be 60. So if you see the total snap size, is equal to 51. Let's check what is the unit that has given to us. The unit uh, that is given to us in the numerical statement is units. There is no unit here. We have some value in the 51 units. So, ideal sum for your machine A, B, C, D, and E is to be calculated by just doing the addition. So, for here, the ideal time for function A comes out to be 25 units. In machine B, just doing the addition of 7 plus 2 plus 2 plus 22, it comes out to be 
I've got these three units. For C, doing the addition of 12 plus 2 plus 3 plus 1 plus 19 comes out to be 37 units. Identify of question B. After doing 14 plus 4 plus 1 plus 16 comes out to be 35 units. Here we have 17 plus 1. So this is the complete numerical of any job and machine problem. We have firstly found out what is the optimal sequence and then we have found out what is the total gas time in the ideal time of each machine. So if you recall how we have solved this numerical, we have firstly checked whether the condition of getting satisfied or not. If the condition, either of the two conditions is getting satisfied, we can convert this n jobs and machine problem into n job two machine problem by considering two fixtures machines. And the processing time for the two fixtures machines was calculated. On the basis of the processing time, we have found out what is the optimal sequence. After finding out the optimal sequence, we carry out the calculation for the total elapsed time. The total elapsed time came to about 51 units, and the respective ideal times for machines A, B, C, and D and E can be calculated via this particular calculation and this will be complete numerical for your M job M machines problem.